Hello and welcome everyone to Ravished, a romance novel and movie review podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Nick. And I'm Donna. This is our first ever mini episode. This episode, we are stepping away from love in terms of romance and ravishment. And in the spirit of the season, fall and Halloween, we are reviewing a movie about sisterly love, Hocus Pocus 2. Yes, the, at least from me, highly anticipated 29 years in the making sequel to one of our childhood Halloween favorites, Hocus Pocus. Yes. Yay. Woo woo. So last Friday night, I hosted a screening of this film with the kiddos, our other two sisters, and our mother present. And it was the perfect greeting to October. Oh, definitely. Uh, me and two of my kids, since we don't live near the rest of the family, uh, we had a little popcorn party and watched it as well. Um, and Nick and I could not wait to do a little surprise episode and review this film that we've actually talked about on the podcast before. And I mean, this sequel has been jokingly said it was being made for years. I've been seeing like pictures that it's coming out for like five years now and it was always like nope it's fake it's fake and it's finally here (laughs) right they were like just kidding yep okay so before we get started we want to talk a little bit about the original hocus pocus so let us refresh your memory the year is 1993 After moving to Salem, Massachusetts, teenager Max Dennison explores an abandoned house with his sister Danny and their new friend Allison. After dismissing a story Allison tells as superstitious, Max accidentally frees a coven of evil witches who used to live in the house. Now, with the help of a magical cat, the kids must steal the witch's book of spells to stop them from becoming immortal. I know that we have seen Hocus Pocus a million times, but I totally forgot about the cat. (laughs) Oh my gosh, Thackeray Binks. (laughs) Uh, But I mean, he went to heaven, so I know why he wasn't in this film. But oh my gosh, he was such a big part. Okay, my bad. So it's because of Max. He's a virgin who lights the black flame candle on a full moon Halloween night. And that, my friends, is how the evil witches were freed from the bowels of hell. (laughs) (laughs) That little rascal. (laughs) So even though it's burned in my memory as the quintessential Halloween film of my entire life, you know, it only has a 38% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And when it was released, was panned by critics Uh, The studio decided, hey, let's release this in July 1993 because kids are out of school. We can get an easy win, you know, but no one really went and saw the movie. And Mm. it wasn't until it was released on home video, you know, VHS. Remember those? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And that's how it became the cult classic it is today. You know, the Rotten Tomatoes, they have such high standards. I I don't understand. <laughs> so it also makes me think, you know what? I should research what movies they do rate at a higher percentage. Mm-hmm. I so, agree. Yeah. I agree. Alrighty, witch. I mean, sister, are you ready to get into it? If I'm the witch, I'm the good witch and you're the evil one. Okay. <laughs> Yes, let's get on our brooms and ride. <laughs> oh my god, yours was really scary. And I just want to say <laughs> for everyone who can't <laughs> for everyone who can't see me right now, which is everybody, I have my vacuum next to me because you know that's how the Sanderson sisters <laughs> roll. <laughs> In 2022. Booyah. (laughs) (laughs) You're silly. 
October 2022, Salem, Massachusetts. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, 29 years after the Sanderson sisters were brought back and defeated by teenagers. Two young women accidentally bring the Sanderson sisters back to Salem and must figure out how to stop the child-hungry witches from stealing the souls of the innocent children in their quest to gain immortality and run the world. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, these are the sound effects we can't afford. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I watched the trailer for the movie literally probably 10 plus times before the film came out and yeah honestly I had no idea what the movie was going to be about except that the Sanderson sisters came back Mm -hmm. I really honestly don't like when I have no idea what a movie is going to be about it's annoying yeah I feel the same way I I couldn't grasp the plot the concept I mean anything I mean the original movie was I know I've said it 80,000 times, such a big part of my childhood that I was going to watch this no matter what, (laughs) but typically I don't watch movies where I can't get anything out of the trailer. Like, why would I watch something I have no idea it's going to be about? Me too. Same. So the elephant in the room for me was the only returning characters from the first film were the Sanderson sisters and Billy Butcherson. So how do you feel about that? The original film centered, you know, around Max and Danny and the girl he liked, Allison. And unfortunately, none of them were in this film. They were, yeah. you know, the main characters. Right. I actually saw an article recently, like last week, where Omri Katz, the actor who was Max, said he was disappointed yeah. they weren't asked to be back because he felt like viewers really wanted to see where they all were and I think it's pretty valid sometimes movies you know done especially so much after so much time than the original was done can rely so much on callbacks to that original version but I would have liked to see those characters you know maybe assist these new ones in some way because they've been through it before Mm -hmm. and I I didn't see how they didn't even acknowledge really they just brought in a whole new spin I don't know I think they could have done it differently yeah for real I mean what a disappointment like what is Thora Birch doing (laughs) oh I know because I looked it up So she was set to play an older role, like where she's older in the movie, the new movie, Hocus Pocus 2. But she she couldn't due to scheduling conflicts with her role in the Netflix series Wednesday, which I read from Entertainment Weekly. They said she didn't fulfill that either. So, but yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to seeing too. I think it comes out in November. Wednesday, oh yeah, the, the I think family, and that actually looks pretty interesting. Definitely, I um, I I know Thora Birch was actually you know obviously the bigger actress during the '90s. She was in a lot more movies and more um more of a household name, but she hasn't been like out there doing all these things. So I don't get why they only asked her. She wasn't like that. But she wasn't bigger than Max and Allison in the film. So I don't know. No shade. But just I don't know. But anyways. At least we get the Sanderson sisters whom, you know, in case you lived under a rock, are Winifred, the head witch in charge, played by Bette Midler, and her clueless good intention sisters, Sarah, played by Sarah Jessica Parker, and Mary Played by Catherine, I'm sorry, Kathy Najimi. Yes, ma'am. And an interesting fact is that the original role of Max, they asked Leo DiCaprio. Oh. Yes. And he's quoted saying, it was more money than I ever dreamed of being offered and everything. But 
he chose uh, this the other movie that was going on at the time. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Mm. And the kicker is he hadn't even tried out for the role yet. So he was just kind of chancing it. But I'm sure, you know, he knew he was amazing genius. Mm-hmm. But and of course, a film with Johnny, you know, no brainer. Yeah, Johnny Depp was literally at his pinnacle of success, I think, during that time, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. And What's Eating Gilbert Grape is a classic. Leo stunned me with his acting abilities at such a young age. I mean, if you haven't seen that movie, it's crazy what he was able to become as an actor. I was very impressed. But... On the other hand, he also would have been an amazing Max because, wow, he was such a heartthrob. Um, anyways, it's okay. I still love you, Amri Cats. You are awesome. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> so back to Hocus Pocus 2. Like we mentioned earlier, this film centers around some new characters to the series, Becca and her friend Izzy. They have a third friend who doesn't really play a big part at first, and her name's Cassie. They're this group of friends who go through some struggles because Cassie has a boyfriend Becca and Izzy don't like. And for the record, Donna doesn't like Cassie's boyfriend either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the film starts in 1600s Salem, and we get to see the young Sanderson sisters. And when we say young, we mean Winifred is only 16 years old. In fact, it's her 16th birthday and a very significant day for witches. Mm. We see young Winifred storming through the town, pushing people out of the way and being insanely rude to everyone. Such a brat. And she's just storming through the town, going to her house, to her sister's where she tells them, you know, well, I'm sorry, we learn pretty much they're orphans, their parents have both died, but they're all each other have. And we see her telling them how irate she is because the minister is trying to force her to marry this boy who she doesn't want to marry. Because, you know, 1600s women have no rights. All we do is marry for betterment in our lives and make babies, you know? Um, so she's telling them all this and she's frustrated. And then all of a sudden the minister shows up to their house with the entire town surrounding the home and tries to pressure Winnie into this marriage. And he thinks that this is the great idea of his to take her sister, Sarah and Mary away from her. They're like, all she has in the whole world. And he thinks, oh, if I take them, she'll have to marry this kid. Um, what? (laughs) Weird. Uh Yeah. So there's suddenly some kind of commotion while they're trying to take her sisters. And there's some spiders that appear. And the three sisters escape to the Forbidden Forest since they know that no one will follow them there. And while they're there, they happen upon a witch who is about to take their souls until she smells Winnie and she realizes she's actually a witch and it's her 16th birthday. The day when a witch gets her powers. Oh yeah. yeah. (laughs) So the older witch gives her book. (laughs) I'm not that good at it. Okay. (laughs) Maybe if I had those teeth in my mouth. Um, and she warns her never to use the spell Magicae Maximus. And then poof, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> and then after learning, you know, how they became witches, we're introduced to modern day teens on Becca's 16th birthday. Mm-hmm. So Becca, Izzy, and Cassie. As a tradition, they do a little scary movie marathon and some sort of witchy seance. Do you remember doing seances as kids? Yeah, really scary thinking about it now and, you know, really taboo as a Christian. I mean, I definitely remember the Ouija board. Our sister Susie telling me her soulmate was Stefan White, (laughs) a.k.a. 
I don't think she knew. Urkel. Steve Urkel. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and then we did light as a feather, stiff as a board, bloody uh-huh. Mary, which I've never done the whole thing of because I was terrified and it's really scary stuff if you believe in that. Like it's what the hell were we thinking? Uh, <laughs> we don't want to talk to ghosts. Uh, <laughs> and what were we doing unattended as children so long? Because I remember candles being involved. too. <laughs> right. Those were the days. Uh, good parenting. Okay. Sorry. Back to the review. <laughs> okay. So the location they chose to do their seance in is somewhere they have they don't even know what it is is actually in the forbidden woods outside of Salem also (laughs) known as uh, the witch's sort of holy land we learned about in the opening of the film so what they also don't know because they've been duped is that the candle they're lighting is actually a black flame candle and it resurrects the Sanderson sisters Uh, so the ground (laughs) begins to rumble (laughs) The ground begins to rumble and shake and bam, into a musical number by the resurrected Sanderson sister. Uh, yikes. It's actually, I didn't even know this, I know, but I wasn't alive then, so it's not my fault. It's a remake of Elton John's The Biatch, not really Biatch, is back from the 1970s and uh, it's The Witch is Back. What did you think of it? Yeah, um, that was the scene where I was like, no, they turned it into a cringy musical, <laughs> you know, right off the bat. I mean, it- I don't, de- I'm sorry, go ahead. It was cheesy. I definitely expected <laughs> music because the musical number from the first film, I feel like was stood out so much. It was a huge part of it, but I wasn't expecting it to be so early in the film, like as soon as they get there. Um, And the number they did, the witch's back was so, it sounded so like positive and upbeat. And it was, it was just different because I felt Mm -hmm. like it was on Disney Plus though. So it appealed to younger people and kids aren't going to be afraid because it was like, not I put a spell on you da, da, da. you know what I mean I don't know right was, I understood why I felt it's like Disney plus exactly it wasn't for the oldies <laughs> right. like the stuff we used to watch that really we shouldn't have watched I mean <laughs> the in the original film it shows them getting hanged and their feet right. kicking until they stop like that's crazy <laughs> the kid yeah. film okay Okay, so Becca and Izzy try to skedaddle as soon as they realize these are the Sanderson sisters. Woo-wee, alarm bells. <laughs> they just brought back witches from hell. But the Sanderson sisters, they immediately catch them. So to prevent the sisters from eating their souls, quick thinking, Becca and Izzy try to convince the sisters they have the secret of youth and take them, of course, to Walgreens. <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> they tell the sanderson sisters they're actually 40 years old so which to these witches i'm sure is the equivalent of 85 years old since they're from the 1600s <laughs> definitely unfortunately this ruse doesn't work and the sanderson sisters are on a mission to make sure they live forever they're not letting teenagers get them again so the sisters decide you know what we're gonna use magic high maximus oh yeah which is uh oh <laughs> one of the spells requirements is the head of an ex-lover which brings back billy butcherson from the original hocus pocus what did you think of his part in the movie donna it was definitely nice to see a familiar face you know a call back to the old film uh One thing that stood out was his British accent. Like, what? I don't remember him being British and he's in America. Okay. Uh, But I, it felt like he got a bigger part in this movie than his character required. Like, it was forced 
and he was made more of a big deal than it should have been in my opinion I didn't see yep. yeah where all his parts really added so much value to the film that he was such a big part of it and that's not even saying he had a big part it just seemed like why is he in it so often like it didn't click to me why they needed him around so much yeah and I don't remember the um accent last time either like I remember him talking like or something or any I don't think he had an accent because I remember they like cut his mouth and like all the moths came out and he just was like this yeah but didn't he call Winifred a bee I think so. Like, That's what I'm remembering. But it didn't sound British. I yeah, don't know. Like, B-I- you... No, never mind. Cut that <laughs> yeah, out. that's totally British. Nope, that's staying <laughs> in there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So then we also get to see another musical number by the sisters. They used to bewitch a crowd like in the original film. The song they chose was One Way or Another. And I wasn't mm, mm. loving gonna, this choice. <laughs> right. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you. Like cheesy. But it definitely turns it into more of a children's movie, I feel. Mm-hmm. there. You know, it, back in Izzy, they they finally get Cassie on board. And they discover Becca's actually a witch. Mm. And getting her powers since it's her 16th birthday. Oh, did you expect that to happen? <laughs> no, it was weird. I saw it coming because birthdays, oh. eh, I don't know. I'm just, I try to predict. So, I mean, with that, I grew up watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Hello, Melissa Joan Hart, if you're listening. Loved mm-hmm. the show and I would have loved some powers. Like, to me, that was such a dream. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, but it made the movie even like more supernaturally unrealistic to me if that is a description people can understand. I mean, it's just too much, but the rest of the movie pretty much is the girls trying to bring down the Sanderson sisters. Mm-hmm. So what what did you think about the movie, Donna? Yeah, I think that pretty much sums up the whole movie. They have to take them down. But mm-hmm. um I thought it was cute. You know, I went into it with lower expectations. I was so excited just to have a sequel, but I had lower expectations because I knew it's going straight to Disney plus it's not coming out in the movies. You know, I just appreciated the nostalgia we had of our childhood because it's like it took me back you know it was nice it felt comfortable to see familiar faces um but I do think that it's okay uh from what you said earlier about how it was supernaturally unrealistic I mean I wasn't expecting a movie about witches being revived for the second time to be something I'd expect in real life (laughs) Mm -hmm. I just wish they would have even maybe brought in a good witch maybe Um, So we could see that they do exist in the hocus pocus world because Becca, you know, she's not evil like Winifred was full of anger and all this stuff that the witch from the 1600s saw in her and knew she wasn't a witch. So I'm like, what, how come we didn't see Becca getting any sort of positive role model of a witch to guide her? I don't know. Yeah. Well, Rotten Tomatoes rates this film at 61%. (laughs) What do you rate it out of five stars? Well, thank you for asking. I give it three stars because I thought it was cute. It was a cute movie at the end of the day, you know? Mm -hmm. It was for families. I didn't think it was made for me, a 30-something-year-old woman. But I, and I wasn't mad I watched it. Um, I think it was a good family film and like an opportunity for the kids to bond with me on something I loved as a kid. Yeah. I'm probably going to stick with the original Hocus Pocus, you know, for future Halloween traditions. So 
Yeah, I wonder what the kids would say if we asked them, like, which one they liked better. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I have no idea. But, but what what about you? Well, first of all, how can Rotten Tomatoes have such a huge gap in score rating between these two? 38% for the original and 61% for this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, please don't even tell me if it's a political thing. I'd die. I think so, um so I think ahead. uh the original people were trying to make it seem like it needed to be more serious and I think people really miss what they perceive as the good old days of like film when so many great movies were coming out me you know and they just gave it a higher rating for the second one because they're like oh I miss Hocus Pocus I don't, I don't know. know. I think it was like a sympathy. It wasn't real. The right. caliber of the storyline wasn't better. Right. Well, with that said, I give it two and a half stars because <laughs> it was too musical esque and it didn't really pull me in. You know, it's like I kept waiting for it to get good and, you know, feel like it did when I was much younger. It mm-hmm. never happened. So just like Batman, all the other remakes and sequels and second or thirds. I just like to say I'm sticking to the original as well, but <laughs> the kiddos really enjoyed it. So it was well worth it. I had $70 worth of gourmet popcorn, which was delicious. Can't believe I spent that much on freaking popcorn. <laughs> My yeah, favorite that's... was the bacon cheddar. That's insane. Um, I will stick to my $3 popcorn in a box that you put in the microwave and have like 10 <laughs> packs of, you know, I don't, I don't splurge in the realm of popcorn. <laughs> You're smart. No, it was a special occasion. It was really nice. And yeah, so, but well, this sums up our bonus episode for season one. Thank you everyone for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. It was really fun to do something different. Um, We hope you all enjoyed. Have a great Halloween season and rest of your fall. Remember, in the next couple of weeks, episode 10 will finally be coming. <laughs> and it's where the listeners choose. That's right. You have control over what book or movie we end up reviewing. So keep those recommendations coming in. And don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe on Instagram and Twitter at Ravished Podcast. Bye. Bye.